You're listening to Today with me, Evan Davis, still not fully able to multitask, and John Humphreys. 28 minutes to nine, and time now for me to get all cantankerous and belligerent, trying to point score with someone over an issue I don't fully understand, and will probably start moralising over as well. I don't understand why young people are looking at pornography in the first place. Welcome to In Our Time, the programme that just starts. The Byzantines invented smelting and trigonometry and I'm joined in the studio by three people who have never had sex with another person and therefore find it all fascinating. Also a reminder that every episode of In Our Time recorded since 1846 is available on our website and only gets downloaded by the contributors and their families. Hello, I'm Jane Garvey and in Woman's Hour today we're talking about modern feminism. And shoes. No, feminism. No, shoes. Can feminists still like shoes? Of course they can. Here's a reading from a memoir of someone who grew up being gay in a working class town with a father who didn't understand but finally came to a state of acceptance. I hear the door slam downstairs. It's my dad. I turn up my erasure tape. Hello, I'm Peter White, still doing my best to make a story about a lady whose gas bill was overcharged by 17p sound interesting and dramatic. Thanks, Peter. Time now for The World at One, where we can all breathe a little more easily and just enjoy the news before the sodding archers. <laughs> Hello, love. Is everything okay? Yes, I'm just uh, doing some uh, radio voice acting by breathing a lot. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I can't, can't breathe. I Oh, he can't even get Is that okay? Go again. Yeah, still rolling. Okay. Yeah. Is that all right? Super. Time now on Radio 4 for some drama. Set in present-day Kabul, the swans have burst, tells the story of a young woman's struggle with the modern world and her traditional values. hi When I was a little girl, the stallholders in the market called me Fatki, which means unbelievable cliché. The Swans Have Burst, written by Tristan Fraser Dunlop. If you're still with us, well done. Time now for Poetry Please with Roger Mogoff. Hello and welcome to Poetry Please. One side of A4, read out over half an hour. Congratulations, you've survived all the way through to five, and here's your award, Eddie Mayer. Top drive time banter, easy manner, news but nothing too heavy, unconvincing sparring with Robert Peston, up and out, bong, bing, bang, bong, BBC News at six o'clock, everything you just heard but done in another voice without the jokes. And speaking of jokes, this is Radio 4, the home of radio comedy, simply because we're the only people who get the budget for it. Perhaps we shouldn't sound so smug about it. Time now for the Oxbridge Chronicles. Hooray! Hello, we're a cavalcade of young white men who speak reasonably fast and deliver a script that has been so laboured over it might as well have been carved out of marble. With a vocal delivery that has the subtlety of a snooker ball smashing into a row of teeth, giving the audience nice easy cues for when to laugh. All that effort and expense, all that fretting, totally wringing out any instinctive comedic flair, leaving you with a contrived morass of puns and tired observations. Doesn't matter because all our mates are in the audience. Hello, tripping over the first sentence of the show as if it was a paving slab. Welcome to Front Row. Tonight we look at something populist in a pseudo-intellectual way. James Bond, the great British icon, has enthralled audiences and readers for over 50 years. But just what relevance does the franchise have to today's post-Cold War Facebook generation? We have assembled the usual suspects, including Mark Kermode and Andrew Collins, to fruitlessly discuss the issue. But first of all, I've got my hell, I'm going to explode. Help! Help! 